Well, I guess it was a misunderstanding because I think from the Qatari government and from the organizers, they have tried to say to you know everyone in Qatar, security guards, listen, now we invite the whole world. Please don't interrupt them uh, while they're filming. For this time, we will allow them to do so. Uh, I know that normally it can be really difficult to get a permission to uh, film in uh, Qatar and uh, do journalism. Um, but during the World Cup, my impression is that they will say, well, you can film in the street, wherever you want. You just need the official FIFA accreditation. And I got one of those, but still I was interrupted. I think it's because not necessarily all security guards in Doha, and that's a lot, got the message that, well, please behave. The only concern I have is, well, they probably in that incident behaved like they are taught to do like they normally do and what about when we all leave will they go back to normal again i don't know it's a misunderstanding they say i got an apology and i accept it okay now should we expect more misunderstandings on a cultural level on maybe on different issues also we should expect that right i mean it could happen obviously because i mean if it could happen to me it could happen to uh, other media crews uh, here the concern I have is that, you know, I'm experienced journalist, traveled for 20 years in hostile regions all over the world. Imagine if it was a young, unexperienced journalist where some, you know, authorities threatened to destroy their camera. I mean, I tried that many times in the Middle East and other places in the world, ah, so but maybe not everyone. You're telling me they did not send a sports reporter, they signed the war reporter. That is correct, but also we have uh, sports crews here. But yeah, I'm actually normally a war reporter. I just came from Ukraine. Uh, so, you know, I'm used to, you know, these kind uh, of things, and it doesn't uh, frighten me. Yeah, actually, I, I saw you operating uh, in front of the camera. It was very impressive. I want to ask you about your, uh, your uh, impression so far as a working journalist uh, around you, as far as the organization, the facilities, the weather. Well, uh, let's, let's take the weather first. I mean, it's uh, obviously very, very hot. But for the players, there is air conditions in the stadium. Else it will be, uh, I guess, really, really tough. Uh, and when it comes to, you know, the conditions and walking around here, yeah, often we have been stopped by authorities asking for our permission. And to me, that's totally okay if they just accept that we actually have a permission and they accept that we can uh, film. And most of them, they uh, do, definitely. And we just came to actually just... Uh, here in, in the background, there's a huge party right now where migrant workers, they're having a lot of fun and they're listening to concerts and there were no problems. We could film anything we wanted. So, you know, I think mostly uh, they accept that we are here and they want to show the good sides of Qatar. But my experience is traveling around the world. If you have some dirty laundry in the basement, often it's pretty difficult for journalists to enter the country and report. And, you know, maybe that was why we were stopped yesterday who knows no interesting uh tell me what are the expectations uh, in denmark from the national team well we have huge expectations in denmark for the national team because we did so well at the european cup so they're pretty high they're talking about winning the world cup which is well i don't know but <laughs> a big discussion in denmark right now is not about football it is about qatar and should uh, we at all watch it on television, should be boycott Qatar and all these kinds of things which make it very difficult for the national team to concentrate about what it's, you know, most important thing for them, football. Mm. So it's a huge discussion in Denmark at the moment, probably many other places as well. Yeah, I understand that the national team uh, wanted to put human rights messages on the uniform, right? And FIFA uh, did not allow. That's, uh, that's the, uh, yeah, that, that is correct. Uh, that was uh, their way of you know, trying to uh, send a message and it was denied by FIFA because, you know, political statements are not allowed uh, during the World Cup from any teams. So, I mean, I don't want to go into that discussion who's right and who's wrong, but yeah, they tried. Uh, but it's with, it is with mixed feelings that they are uh, attending this uh, World Cup. And, you know, the world is never black and white. And when you are here, I mean, there's a lot of nice people, a lot of migrant workers that are actually happy to be here, happy to work here. Believe me, it's true. That's maybe not the picture you get all the time. And there's also the other side. You also see migrant workers who work very, very hard with very tough conditions. 
But you know, as you know, uh, the story is never, you know, just black and white. The world, it is in colors. Yeah, and and you're telling me uh, the human rights issue is a big thing for the Danes. It's it's in the discussion. Very very big thing. And you know, my TV station. Imagine we bought. The, uh, the 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 broadcasting rights. I mean, we are broadcasting this World Cup. So in one hand, we need to have a huge party, and wow, you know, we can uh, you know show the World Cup in football. And with the other hand, there's a lot of criticism. So like, it's 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 actually really complicated to uh, to cover this uh, World Cup. Yeah, Rasmus, thank you very much. Have a good luck there, and enjoy the rest of your assignment there. Thank you.